Yeah, we really need to talk about money, don't we? I mean, I don't know about you, but have you not noticed, like, games are really expensive these days? And, I well, might go against what you would have thought the companies would say, actually, some sales are down of big titles. So today, let's discuss the pricing of video games. Are you, let me know with a comment down below, are you buying less games at full price now the premium titles are $70? Well, the statistics seem to say that your answer is going to be yes. Because, uh, I mean, a few reasons. I mean, if, if you're Microsoft, they just don't have much for you to buy, do they? But also, even for Sony, people are not buying games at the same rate that they were. Many people say the common adage that, hey, these games are too expensive. Why are they so expensive? If they were less expensive, more people would buy them, and then you, Mr. Publisher, would make more money. Well, that's not what's happened with the market leader PlayStation. Less people bought games, the revenue has gone up. Let's dive in to some consumer data straight from Sony and a whole bunch of analysis to work out what the hell is going on with the help today's sponsor. NordVPN.com forward slash Bellular News. It's where you'll get two years plus four months for free, all backed by the 30-day money-back guarantee at my link down below. Now, NordVPNs, awesome. They give you freedom, they give you security, they let you browse the web as if you are anywhere. Uh, one example, streaming, obviously. So many streaming sites are regionally locked, and sometimes even stuff that I really want to look at for work is, is locked because it's in the US. Nord saves you there. But what I love, and I've only really recently found out about, is using Nord for, like, taking advantage of regional pricing. There's the example I've talked about before with Tom Scott, who he flew to France, wanted to hire a car, realized it would be a ripoff, so he VPN back to the UK, got a way better deal. You can do that with hotels, airline tickets, all that stuff. The amount of, like, you know, region and user-specific uh, like pricing that is based on location out there is completely mad. And if you have a VPN, you're not going to be suckered in by it. It's just one of the many, many uses of a VPN. Of course, it'll keep you safe from many threats like the, the phishing, the man in the middle attacks, you know, when you, you've got a <laughs> fake Wi-Fi network trying to pwn you, you've got their dark web monitor, you just add your email to that. And if your credentials are leaked anywhere, like in a dark web leak, then ping, they tell you, you can change your password. This stuff's great. It's why I use Nord. The app and browser extension are super easy to use, so hit up nordvpn.com forward slash Bellier News to get two years with four months free and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Okay, so we're thinking about this because number one, we've all noticed that, and number two, uh, Derek Strickland uh, at Tweaktown has actually uh, deep-dived into Sony's recent financials, and uh, it's a really fantastic write-up. Software revenues are at an all-time high. Uh, data provided by Sony Corp indicates that, uh, you know, PlayStation gamers spent however much money. Hardware has been pulling in record numbers, so is software, but overall game unit sales have actually went down quite a bit in fiscal year 2022 dropping to a mere 264.2 million games sold. But that's actually a drop in units of 39 million from the previous year. Yeah, damn, I mean, less COVID checks maybe, but it's still staggering. So yeah, software sales are down, software revenue uh, is, is up, and apparently software revenue doesn't actually include microtransactions, right? So, uh, when you take this to its immediate logical endpoint, there are less games being sold slightly, but the games that are being sold are more expensive. So much so that it doesn't just make up for that lost revenue, it ex and in fact exceeds it, right? That quite is something. And then uh, we can cross-reference uh, with Activision. We've got some publicly available data from their reporting to just sort of see this. Activision has confirmed that Modern Warfare 2 generated $1 billion in game sales uh, revenues in just 10 days. However, those massive earnings did not significantly budge PlayStation's total game unit sales during Modern Warfare 2's launch period. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, in that quarter, Sony sold uh, 86.5 million titles, of which 65.7 million were uh, third-party games. This is a year-over-year -year reduction of 6.2 million uh, total you know, game units, and a year-over-year -year drop of 15.7 third-party games. And, like, that's in a COD quarter. So, yeah, across both first- and third-party games, those sales numbers are down, but revenue is up. Um, and when you sort of you know, as we would maybe take the temperature of the audience, you may not have expected that, that it has actually made up for it. So let's go and uh, take a look into this. So Tweaktown also did a survey of their audience, uh, right? And you know what? We will actually, yeah, we will mirror this in a community post. So we'll see how you guys stack up to Tweaktown. But anyway, 
How much are you willing to pay for a new AAA? 60 bucks max, 68% of people. 70% of people are, sorry, $70 only in special cases, 23%. That's probably where I will fall. I will spend 70 bucks, but it's got to be, you know, Ghost of Tsushima. It's got to be like a really good game. And then some other people falling in other ranges there. So overall, gamers say that they won't pay 70 bucks, uh, except in 23% of cases, yet somehow revenue's going up while sales are decreasing. And it probably means a couple of things. People are unhappy to buy $70 video games, but in a poll, they are unhappy to say that they will. And I think that for many people, this is the have your cake and eat it too thing, where it's like, right, I really want to play this game, but if I get surveyed, I'm, I'm going to say I don't want to, because if I say that I will, then they'll probably just make my game $75 or $80, and that's even more. By the way, compare pounds to uh, USD, and often we have to pay $69.99. For us, that can equate to about $85 to $88. Happy. <laughs> um, then also, maybe there's enough people in the general audience, so, you know, not just us, uh, capital Gs, uh, who buy one to two games a year, and they are happy to put down the extra 10 bucks for their limited purchases. Um, because it is almost uh, worth remembering that to uh, quite a lot of people, the price doesn't matter because they're just going to buy the next Call of Duty, the next this, the next that. So right now, this gamble of raising up prices that I think was really spearheaded by Sony, it is actually working. So let's talk about this from the publisher side, right, and what's actually going on. So sometimes people think the cost is reasonable. You have games like Tears of the Kingdom, that's been in development for a long time, uh, Dead Space, which is very well received, Final Fantasy 16, I think especially for 16 and Tears of the Kingdom, people are almost like, you know, they will happily throw over that extra 10 bucks sight unseen. But sometimes they aren't. You've got The Last of Us Part 1 remaster in PS5, and then of course you've got Redfall, because I am willing to pay $70 for Ghost of Tsushima. I am willing to pay, uh, you know, full price for a Star Wars Jedi survivor that has a good frame rate. But for Redfall, there's really, I mean, Redfall is a double A B. Ghost of Tsushima is a is a triple A. You know, you have to really be up there uh, in order to justify that. And this is also an issue that has spurred on a lot of claims of increased development costs. And a lot of people have been skeptical about that. Um, but actually, if you take a look at the CMA's ongoing analysis of Activision and the highly public data available from that, you can actually see development costs. So look at this. This is as uh, picked up on by Kotaku from the CMA, diving into all the data that they have access to via that case. Some AAA franchises like COD have development budgets that already exceed $300 million, and the next GTA or other future tentpoles are expected to hit $250 million or higher. Uh, now we need almost 1.5 lead studios for each annual COD right? Expensive. Uh, one publisher said it spends $164 million in pre-launch development costs and $55 million in marketing. Another one said a range from $80 million to $350 million, with marketing costs of up to $310 million for the biggest games. A third publisher reported costs between $110 and $350 million. And a fourth one said budgets range from $90 to $180 million, with marketing ranging from $50 to $150 million. And that its most expensive game costs $660 million to develop with a marketing budget of 550 million that's bad that's so much money but call of duty sold through a billion in 10 days it's a big arms race folks that's what it is so now games need to be bigger more beautiful more technically impressive i mean just look at jedi survivor it is jaw-droppingly stunningly good almost to the point where it hurts itself because of the performance impact of that but that's just how hard they are trying to absolutely just blow your socks off with these games. So these budgets are massive. And then onto that budget, throw a 50 to 90% on again for the sort of marketing that they do for triple A's. And if you want to know how a game can cost that much, it's because you have teams of hundreds of hundreds of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people working for like five plus years. That's a lot of time and money. I mean, you may hear now it's about five to 10 years to make a full scale triple A video game in the blockbuster sense, right? Redfall, that took five years. Yeah, five years for Redfall. Arkham Knight, released in 2015. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, releases in 2024. Now, there were cancelled projects and failed things in that period, but fundamentally, studio output. 2015, 2024. Rocksteady, almost for a decade, they were just, you know, publicly just away, asleep, doing something else. Right? That is... 
mad for one project. That costs so much money. And I think be because of that, because of the ever-increasing, you know, demand, that drive to get up the quarterly report, uh, yeah, they're going to take that $70. And Sony knew that they could be the tip of that spear because more than so many others in this scene, they put that quality in. They put that blockbuster quality in, you know, to, to the point where they can demand $70. But evidently, like the likes of a Redfall, cannot justify that much money. And I suppose the numbers looking like this, it's it's no surprise that like when faced with a black hole of money, sometimes publishers may just say, "We're going to put the game out, and that's just going to be that." Right? I mean, you might wonder, like, why did Redfall come out the way that it did? Is Animax just like, look, we we can't put can't put more into this. We have to put the game out now. That's that. You know, it's like once that release date is announced, it starts this ticking time bomb. So many games are delayed, and it's like they clearly need to be delayed too. Uh, but ultimately, I think that is how we've got to that stage where it's $70. PlayStation took the ground. Other people are trying to run in and hold that ground. But unlike PlayStation, they don't necessarily have the goods. And, and that's just... Oh, that, that's just the way that it's been. I think it's why 70 bucks for Spider-Man 2, people will be very happy to play that. If it's, you know, if it's as good as Spider-Man 1, and I certainly would expect it to be, yeah, I think that is totally worth 70 bucks for the entertainment value. I'm sure Horizon uh, Forbidden West would have been that for people. Elden Ring. Yeah, Elden Ring. 70 bucks. Oh, great game. That's a fair, I, I'd pay that price. And Redfall? <laughs> so many other of those triple A's that just don't quite come together. Yeah. But anyway, the way that it's working out is that people are uh, overall spending more per game and uh, they're buying less games. And actually, a lot of the time that can be, uh, I don't want to say a good thing, but some of the wisdom is to highball, get your most excited people in first, right? Where you get as much money per unit out of the people who are willing to pay that much. And uh, then as you do the sales, you slowly uh, expand and expand and expand the, ex uh, you know, the audience who can access your, uh, your game right? Uh, because if your launch price is too low, then you can't do a meaningful sale. Whereas like now, you know, a 40% off sale, it's still 40% off 70 bucks. That is like not money to shake a stick at, the money that a publisher would get. So it's a pretty damn fascinating situation. And I would especially say for Sony, you must remember, they are doing $70 and other than payment processing fees for their own games, they're getting all of that. So that is like maximum efficiency. Um, now, of course, I'm talking about digital here because that's where everybody, uh, you know, for the most part, can control their prices. Um, I think it was at Tears of the Kingdom, Connell, our team got for £45 instead of full price. Uh, I think it was like at a local shop. I forget which one. Um, so you can actually find physical deals that are quite a bit better. Um, but certainly when you go on digital, that's where, you know, that's where they want you to go. That's where they control everything. And that's where you can primarily see their intent. Ah, look, I'm going to focus on value. And I think that focusing on value, not price, there's a small number of games that are worth 70, but it's not as much as the industry seems to think it is. <laughs> it certainly isn't Redfall. Ah, there you go. Okay, what games have you bought for that price point and actually been happy with? That's what I'd like to know. Has anyone made it for you? Anyway. That's it for me today. Thanks for watching. Thanks to our sponsor for supporting our channel, supporting our team. And with that said, I'll see you next time.